Hi there, I'm Sarah and I'm going to talk to you today about um, transformational reconstruction and this is part of Sustainable Production 3 and uh, yeah, let's just get into it. So uh, I'm going to talk to you a bit today about TR cutting and this is Shingo Sato, the founder of this technique. Um, I would call him a pattern cutting master, <laughs> almost like in the, in the pattern cutting world because he he does these amazing um, transformations with fabric. We're going to talk a little bit about him in a little bit. I'm just looking at my notes as we go. So if you hear bits and pieces. So what? So what is TR cutting? So transformational reconstruction, oh gosh, that is such a big word, or TR cutting for short, is a technique very different from conventional pattern making. Um, so, you know, usually we have like a, t a 2D pattern um, flat on the table, uh, but he he mixes it up with um, a combination of 3D, 3D draping and origami. So you get these amazing 3D creations. Um, but the most important thing that is that he eliminates the darts and then he replaces them with style lines. So you get all these amazing shapes then. Um, so as I said, he draws uh, lines directly onto a bodice or like say a 3D calico or muslin form and manip manipulates the star lines. So yeah, he, he gets these interesting shapes and I, I almost think they're almost like couture uh, pieces because they look, especially when he makes them into a, a fabric, you can see all the, the details and folds that come out of that. So. I think that the TR technique that he's he's come up with is more it's more intuitive, it's more organic, it's a more organic design process um, than you know the usual mathematical based pattern cutting that we, we're all used to. Um, yeah, when I watched him, you know, it kind of inspired me to have a go and do something a little bit different. I think as designers, sometimes we get a little bit stuck and we get boxed into the kind of same processes so sometimes it's good to actually mix things up a bit um, but I was just going to tell you a little bit more as well about his process with um, the style lines when, when he creates these style lines on a bodice um, so what he does is he he uses a basic a basic pattern block and then I'm going to go on to the next slide actually because I might explain it a bit more because it shows you the manipulation of the dart um, so yeah, he'll take a basic pattern block. All the darts are oh, sorry, all the darts are sewn closed, and then the muslin, like the toile that he creates from the from the bodice, is placed onto a um, a form. And then once he's taken the darts away, um, he creates these new style seams, which he draws freehand onto the bodice. So you know he cuts along these new seam lines then and then that creates these different pattern pieces so as you can see on here you know um, you can see these different star lines that he's drawn onto the bodice um, and there's a great video you can watch of him doing this especially the dart manipulation which is really important to this technique um, one of the most important things i think is you need to, you need to match obviously this the, this the, the curved seam line so you know, you need a good fit. So we, we, he uses lots and lots of notches to, to match up those curved lines. So that, that's one thing I think I took from it. Um, but the one thing as well, that he, you've got to have those best points to remain the same because you've got to pass that style line through both lines, through, through both dart points, especially on the bust, um, for it to be, you know, to work. Uh, Okay, so why why do TR cut in? Well, as I said earlier, I think for students it's a good experience to practice your drafting skills and also it's a good creative process, but we're gonna look at some reasons. Um, like I said, it's, it's experimentation, it's good for drafting and creating. Um, it enables you to design and let the fabrics flow around the body so you're able to have some freedom with your um, design process. Um, you know, you get these futuristic shapes, optical illusions. If you look at some of his work, you can see that he's created some really interesting black and white, you know, colorful uh, 
graphic pieces, waves, stripes, and then he, he loves geometric patterns as well. I've noticed that with some of his work. You know, and you get very exciting and unexpected results. So, you know, it allows for like a lot of trial and error. You're not gonna kind of go into it thinking you're gonna get a perfect garment. You're just having a play, playing with the fabric. And I think actually there's no such a thing as a mistake because everything that you do, you might stumble on a happy accident, you never know. So, so who is Shingo Sato? Like, as I said earlier, he's, a, he's an amazing um, pattern ma master, as I call him. And yeah, he's just this innovative pattern maker. Um, he's actually been teaching this technique for over 15 years. And I noticed when I looked into him that he, he'd taught all over the world in very prestigious places, you know. Um, I watched a video on him, I think he was in design, the, was it design Parsons School? Or Parsons School of Design, I think it is. Um, and he, yeah, and he, he showed all the techniques that he'd ever learnt and shared it with the students. And, you know, he, yeah, he's so knowledgeable with this technique. Um, and so these, some of his famous designs are this, these pieces on, on the screen here. So you've got um, the origami dress you've got the ribbon skirt, and you've got the accordion collar, and they're all pieces that are quite recognized with his work. And then these are some of the other techniques that he teaches. So you've got very architectural um, shapes. Um, he uses lots of masking tape to create these three-dimensional forms. Um, and I watched a video on him, he was using paper on the on the actual um, calico so he was building up from the bodice and building these incredible shapes especially around the sleeves and then this is the technique that you know most people know him for with the style lines taking eliminating those darts and creating a, a curved style line so you can see these interesting waves going around the body which cause which creates a really beautiful finish and then my favourite has got to be the origami. I just love how he folds fabrics and uh, you get these like sleeve details, which are amazing, they're incredible. And one of them is called a bamboo technique, I think is the one in the picture up above with the lady's hands there. Um, and that's a very popular kind of sleeve technique that he teaches. Um, I've also been having a little try at origami. He showed a... Um, it was a pocket kind of detail. It was a piece that you could put on a front. So I've incorporated some of that in my own work the last couple of weeks. So I could bring that in next week to show you guys. Um, but yeah, I just think, you know, he's really worth looking at as a designer and, and seeing how you could incorporate it into your own work. Um, I'm just checking my notes, guys, to see if I've not missed anything for you. And, uh, oh. Yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about the videos as well. I forgot about that. So um, there are two videos that I've um, put below, but we'll talk about is is it sustainable? That's the next. That's the most important question. Question. Um, well, TR cutting is in in the in the sense that you know you don't need you don't need you're reducing the seams, so you're not you're only cutting the um, pattern pieces one. So you don't need those seams. So you're, you're obviously you're eliminating those those seams. Um, I would say the dead stock fabric that you could use maybe for a project. But you say you've got some fabric lying around that might be useful for you to try this technique with. Um, and then wedding gowns and couture pieces. I think because they've got longevity, they can be passed on to others. So. In terms of that, maybe, you know, these are just my views. You could you could say that that's sustainable. Um, obviously, it isn't because the technique is very experimental. So you are wasting lots of different um, fabrics in the process because it's a design process. Um, so it's dependent on your fabric choice, I suppose, and if you're going to use dead stock or not. Um, but, you know, saying that, I created the origami pocket um, it was quite wasteful in terms of 
putting the two pieces together and having the excess left over, like the excess offcuts. Um, but they could be they could be reused somewhere else. So you could have that in mind when you're designing with this kind of technique. And then, like I said, there's two videos you should watch. Um, it's the dark manipulation one and the box integration technique because both of those are very um, key uh, techniques to learn when you're doing this and uh, I think they're worth a watch and like I said there's another one on, on YouTube you could even look that up and uh, add that to your watch list so yeah thank you um, if you can check out USW Fashion Design on Instagram and also on YouTube and then obviously check out the Dati Clothing and the Sustainable Studio. And I'll see you guys next week. Thank you. Bye.